What's going on guys? This is Vanalik Puma, back with another Borderlands 2 video, and today I wanted to go over all of the newly added Rainbow Rarity weapons and gear that got added with the Commander Lilith DLC. Now, real quick before we start, there are about 13 new rainbow or effervescent items that got added with this DLC, and they consist of new weapons, shields, grenades, and relics. I'll be going over and ranking all of these based on how good I think they are, I'll be providing a short analysis of each item, and I'll show almost all of them dropping at their designated drop area so you can verify the drop. Now, I say almost all because I had a lot of issues with the Nirvana. I'll get more into it when I discuss that item, but I didn't want to delay this video for you guys any longer as I already spent like 10 hours trying to get that gun to drop. So be sure to smash like if you had a hard time getting a Nirvana, and also be sure to smash like and leave a funny comment if you managed to get a Nirvana to drop. But enough intro, we got a ton of these to go over, and I think we'll go ahead and we'll start with our lowest ranking entry, which is going to be the Retainer Shield. So the Retainer Shield is one of two new shields that got added with this DLC. What makes this shield so special is that you're given good reason to pair it with the Toothpick, as the Retainer can increase the player's movement speed in the Haterax boss room while the Toothpick is equipped. It also makes sense to pair the Retainer with the Mouthwash Relic as well, as that Relic goes well with the Toothpick, boosting that Assault Rifle's damage. As for the shield itself, it's basically an order shield featuring virtually identical stats while gaining inherent corrosive resistance and losing the compatibility with the law. Currently, it doesn't appear the roid damage works, which is unfortunate, but assuming it did, it would be on par with an order shield that has similar parts. If you're curious, we can compare the Roid stats to other popular Roid shields like the Love Thumper and Hide of Terramorphous, where you'll see the Retainer is weaker than the Hide and outperformed by the Love Thumper in terms of recharge delay. So it will make for a good but not quite ultimate Roid shield once the Roid damage aspect has been fixed. If you asked me, it's not a bad Roid shield and would be higher in the rankings if the Roid aspect worked, Still, it's nice to have with the toothpick, and if you want one, the retainer drops from sandworms that can be found in the burrows. And I'll be rolling some footage right now so you can guys watch it drop. This brings us to our second shield, which seems to suffer from similar problems that the retainer suffers from, and that's the easy mode. From what I can tell, and like the retainer, the easy mode's base functions don't appear to work. So while a significant amount of Nova damage is listed, this is a property that it doesn't appear you can take advantage of. Personally, I find this unfortunate because the easy mode is best described as a clone of the legendary black hole shield, possessing virtually identical stats. I guess as a trade-off, you do get a damage boost provided the peak opener is paired with the easy mode at Digistruct Peak, but a part of me I think would still like to be able to take advantage of the easy mode's black hole effect, since it's basically identical. If you'd like an easy mode, it's obtained as a guaranteed drop from one of the Haterax chests after you defeat him in the Writhing Deep. I'll showcase a photo on screen here so you can verify the drop. Alright, this brings us to our first and what I would consider to be lowest tier effervescent weapon, and that is the Nirvana. Maybe I'm biased, but the Nirvana to me just seems like a bad weapon. While it's true that many of the weapons that got featured in this DLC are duplicates of existing weapons, they usually have some major upside to them, like the Amigo Sincero being a way better version of the Trespasser. The Nirvana, on the other hand, is a simple reskin of the Hellfire that possesses virtually identical stats and abilities, yet somehow, or at least in my experience, manages to actually be rarer than all of the other Rainbow Rarity items. As mentioned in this video's intro, this is the only effervescent item that I couldn't get to drop in-game. My main guess as to why this is so hard to get is because the Nirvana appears to only drop from infected badass saplings. These enemies are usually pretty uncommon, and upon killing them, they rarely ever drop any items. You could potentially get four or five badass saplings to spawn in a row, and not a single one will drop anything, which may contribute to making the Nirvana a lot more difficult to get. That or I just have exceptionally bad luck, and feel free to have a laugh at my expense in the comments section below. 
ultimately, just get a Hellfire if you're looking for one of these, as it's a lot easier to get, let alone with the proper parts. That said, if you want to go for a Nirvana specifically, I'd recommend the Doll Abandon where you find all of the infected, or the Backburner at the very beginning of the DLC where you're clearing out the town. Both places have a fairly high chance of spawning infected badass saplings. Okay, so we've got the lousier entries out of the way, we can now talk about both of our relics, and we'll start with the Hard Carry, and then work our way to the Mouthwash. The hard carry pretty much does what it says as it boosts assault rifle damage and boosts your health and fight for a lifetime at Digistruct Peak. If you ask me, unless you're using both the peak opener and easy mode shield with this thing at Digistruct Peak, you could do a lot better than the hard carry relic as the mouthwash, which is easier to get, has superior assault rifle damage bonus. While I don't think the hard carry is bad per se, you're not really going to get a lot out of it unless you've paired it with the peak opener in easy mode at Digistruct Peak. So if you still want one of these, they're found in the Haterax chests, and here is a screenshot for you if you'd like to verify the drop. As for our next entry, which is the mouthwash, I'd say that of the two newly added effervescent relics, the mouthwash is probably the best. This is because the percent bonus it provides is pretty high, and while it is additive, in my experience, it's still more than what's provided by the Heart of the Ancients relic that's of a similar level. Plus, as the special effect states, this thing boosts the toothpick's damage, so if you plan on using the toothpick, it's highly recommended that you pair the mouthwash relic with it. Ultimately, if you want this thing, all you have to do is complete the main story quest, beat Hector, and you'll receive the mouthwash as a quest reward. Just beat the DLC, and this one is yours. Number 8. The Unicorn Explosion. As you might be able to guess based on the name, the Unicorn Explosion is based off of the Sword Explosion from the Dragon Keep DLC. As far as stats go, the Unicorn Explosion is identical to the Sword Explosion, provided both weapons are of the same level and possess identical parts. The only real observable difference is the weapon scan, and the fact that the Unicorn Explosion shoots but stallion-shaped unicorns rather than swords. Fortunately, the Sword Explosion is one of the better Torque shotguns, let alone one of the better E-Tech weapons in general, thanks to its quasi-merv grenade-type properties. Having the Unicorn Explosion being basically the same thing isn't so bad in that sense. While I do wish there was something that was a little more unique about the Unicorn Explosion, the Sword Explosion is still a pretty great weapon and is a good thing to imitate. As for acquisition, the Unicorn Explosion may prove to be a little bit harder to get. It will require the mysterious amulet relic from the Dragon Keep DLC, and once you have that, you'll also need to make sure you've saved Butt Stallion in the Commander Lilith DLC. Once you've done all that, all you have to do at that point is simply equip the amulet, walk up to Butt Stallion in the DLC, and feed her Iridium, and if you get lucky, the Unicorn Explosion should drop. This brings us to our first grenade, which is going to be the Anti-Infection. The Anti-Infection Grenade mod is best described as a modified Fire Bee and has identical stats to the Fire Bee, provided both have identical parts when compared. The major difference is that the Anti-Infection can also deal a bit of explosive damage with the secondary grenades that it emits. When thrown, the Flame Turret will spawn and then emit around 6-8 grenades in like a circular formation that deal explosive damage. And of course, that's followed by some more grenades that act more like the traditional fire bee, and that they fly up in an arc and land, dealing primarily fire damage. In a sense, the anti-infection is sort of a weird cross between your traditional Torg Merv and the fire bee, and for that reason, you may find that it's a pretty nice grenade to have when going up against mobs that are vulnerable to fire damage. If you'd like to get your hands on an anti-infection, Cassius is the boss that drops it. It's sort of a trek to get to him, but I think it's worth it if you can get an adequately leveled version. Here's some of the drop footage now if you'd like to verify the drop for yourself. Now, not to be confused with the anti-infection, it's about time we discussed the infection cleaner. The infection cleaner is an odd take on what is already a somewhat misunderstood weapon, which is the Avenger. Both are almost identical, except for the fact that the Infection Cleaner has a fixed element and is slightly stronger provided both weapons have identical parts. 
This actually yields stronger reloads on the infection cleaner, thanks in part to that superior base damage. However, what's odd is that the infection cleaner's bouncing Betty projectiles deal non-elemental damage instead of the matching fire element like the original Avenger does. This isn't necessarily bad, but it's kind of weird and a little limiting in that you're only going to want to use this thing to perform Avenger-style reloads against bosses. Sure, you could still take advantage of the ammo regen, and the infection cleaner still has pretty good stats, but I feel this standard Avenger may be more practical due in part to how you can get more elemental variety, and the Betty Grenade effect matches the element of the weapon rather than it being non-elemental damage. If you want this thing, it drops from various new Pandoran soldiers, however I actually managed to get it to drop from Lieutenant Angvar of all people. I wouldn't recommend farming Angvar specifically, but just try to get somewhere where there are a lot of new Pandoran soldiers and run the area a couple of times. Here's some footage of me getting this thing so you can verify the drop. Number 5. The Electric Chair like the anti-infection, the electric chair grenade mod is another souped-up legendary exterminator grenade, however this time it's emulating the Stormfront rather than the Fire Bee. Like the anti-infection and Fire Bee, the electric chair and Stormfront feature nearly identical stats, though it may actually be at a slight disadvantage in that the electric chair appears to be locked to a lob deployment method only, which is unfortunate. On the flip side, however, I do think the lack of deployment options is more than made up for by the electric chair's explosion. Not only is there a massive electrical explosion which can potentially deal a decent amount of damage to your enemies, but the electric chair also spawns 8 tesla orbs as opposed to just the 5 or so that you might see with the stormfront. This should make the electric chair a more desirable option as far as outright damage goes, and while the stormfront might still be useful for stripping your shield, the electric chair is overall superior from a combat perspective. If you'd like to get your hands on this thing, your best bet is to farm it from Uranus. I'll go ahead and I'll roll the drop footage of me getting one here if you'd like to verify the drop, but in general, I think you'll agree this is a pretty great take on what was already a pretty popular grenade. And in fourth place, we have the Hot Mama. Despite being based on the Godfinger, the Hot Mama comes across as being more of its own thing rather than a Godfinger. As far as I can tell, there doesn't appear to be any long-range damage enhancement like the Godfinger has, and in place of that, you're getting a fire element on a Jacobs, a seductive talking voice for when you perform various actions, and overall better stats. There also appears to be a crit damage stacking ability similar to the Morningstar, however, unlike the Morningstar, it is nowhere near as exploitable. To give you some idea of how this thing performs, here's the Hot Mama compared to a Godfinger with identical parts, and I'd say the former totally outclasses the latter. I've also gone ahead and compared it with a Muckamuck, and while the listed damage on the Muckamuck is higher, the Hot Mama will usually outperform it on criticals, provided the enemy has a fire weakness. The Mama even appears to be a bit better than the Snyder as well, though the Snyder may have a bit of an advantage when paired with the proper accessory. Overall, I'd say the Hot Mama Sniper is actually pretty good, and while it won't be the only sniper you'll ever use, if you can get one with a good snope, it's a pretty good gun to have. It's supposed to drop from Lieutenant Hoffman, which there should be some footage of that rolling right now. And in third place for the bronze, we have the World Burn. Though it possesses a fixed fire element, the World Burn is actually a pretty decent upgrade of the Nukem for the base game. As you can see from a stat comparison, the World Burn has a slight edge when it comes to its damage and also possesses a higher magazine size. Perhaps the biggest advantage, however, is the reduced ammo consumption of one rocket per shot as opposed to like two or three of the regular Nukem. This means that you can fire the world burn multiple times before having to reload, all while using about as much ammo as you would when using the bada boom, which if you ask me is a pretty good thing. My only complaint with this thing would be the fire elemental exclusivity, which does limit the world burn's potential somewhat depending on what enemies you come across, but if you can get past that, it is a great rocket launcher. Otherwise, there's not a whole lot else to say about this thing. 
It's a great rocket launcher, and while it's probably not as good as the Norfleet or Bada Boom, I'd say it could definitely have a place in the top five. If you want it, be sure to head out to the Doll Abandon and go where Lieutenant Bolson spawns to farm one. And you should be seeing some footage of that right now. Coming in at second place, we have the Peak Opener. Compared to many other rocket slash grenade type assault rifles in Borderlands 2, the Peak Opener is a very welcome addition to a weapon subtype that's usually associated with being pretty awful. While the Peak Opener still can't crit and is based off of the Kerblaster, the Peak Opener is crucially different in that it possesses superior fire rate at the expense of some base damage. There's also the fact that this fire rate increases while aiming down the sights, and rather than just one child grenade like the normal Core Blaster has, the Peak Opener spawns three. And when you combine all of these factors together, the player can quickly shoot in a general direction and deal a surprising amount of damage to would-be foes. This is a pretty great weapon for Axton, as it appears to benefit from grenade damage bonus on the secondary grenade, just like the Kerblaster. And the Shock Elemental exclusivity could make it a great choice for Shock Anarchy Gauge as well. If you do run Digistruct Peak, it's highly recommended that you pair the Peak Opener with the Easy Mode Shield and the Hard Carry Relic, as you can increase the rifle's overall damage output. Personally, I like the peak opener quite a bit, and if you want one, it's obtained from Haterax chests. I'll showcase a picture of the drop here if you're interested in getting your hands on one of these. And for our final entry, we have the Toothpick. A great weapon to pair with either or both the Retainer Shield and Mouthwash Relic, the Toothpick combines a few different attributes from various doll weapons. For the projectile, you're getting a 5 times horizontal projectile pattern that's reminiscent of the Pitchfork. You're getting Fire Mental exclusivity, which is reminiscent of the Seraphim. And you're also getting a 2 times projectile multiplier on the item card that's reminiscent of the non-unique Doll Double Tap Rifle. Though, unlike the Double Tap Rifle, the Toothpick isn't limited to 2 round bursts, which is more ideal for better DPS. In practice, the Toothpick is pretty decent when combined with the Mouthwash Relic, and from what I can tell, it appears to exceed the damage potential of the Firebone of the Ancients Relic when it is paired with the Toothpick. I think the downside and the reason I was hesitant to rank this at number 1 is because the Toothpick has fairly high ammo consumption, clocking in at about 6 rounds per shot. This is pretty high and could present some problems on pretty much every character but Salvador, but I guess if you are playing Salvador, you can always regenerate all of that ammo back. Overall though, I like the Toothpick quite a bit, and if you want one, your best bet is to get it from Sandworms like you got the Retainer. In my experience, the Retainer is more common, but with enough time, you should also get the Toothpick to drop. And here is some drop footage of that if you would like to verify the drop. Alright guys, thank you all for watching, and that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload my next video, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.